right? Because apologists are few in Jamaica, right? Jamaica is a country that um, enjoys freedom of worship so much, right? That you can say just about anything, you can preach just about anything, and there will be no one to stand up against you and say, yo, listen, no one openly look to challenge you like that in Jamaica. I've said it before, one of the easiest places to start a cult, right, is in Jamaica. Because we have this sense of freedom of worship, we don't think it's our prerogative to protect the truth and defend the truth. No, Jamaicans are not like that. Yes, guys, that video or that clip that you saw just now, it is taken from a video that I did in April 2021, right? And the title of that video is The Challenge of Biblical Illiteracy in JA and the World. Right, I'll post the full title for the clip and I'll tell you where in um where on my channel in what playlist section you can actually find the video itself. Right guys, you'll see me put it on the on the screen. Now when I said that in that video, April 2021, right? I never imagined that a cult would have emerged in my country that would have shaken Jamaica so much. I never imagined, although I knew that Jamaica I know, is very vulnerable when it comes to cult because of the culture of Jamaica, I never imagined that it would have reached to this stage. You would have seen in the clip where I stated that Jamaica is vulnerable when it comes to cults and the reason for this is because we Jamaicans it is being said that Jamaica has the most churches per square mile out of all countries in the world. That is what statistics say, right? And we enjoy this freedom of worship, whereas persons will be persecuted and so forth for their faith in other places. Jamaica is a place where you can walk publicly with your Bible and preach and you don't need to worry about anything. In the schools and so forth, they have worship session before class even resume. Right? And so because of this, we have a saying in Jamaica. From the group says one God, or from you say one God, that's all that matters. Irrespective of what you say about this one God or what you believe about this one God or what you practice in accordance to your belief of that one God, they have no problem as long as you say one God. Take for example, the Mormons church. It is well established by all of Christendom that it's a cult. Likewise, the Jehovah's Witness church as well. All of Christendom acknowledge that both of them are a cult. But yet still, the Jehovah's Witnesses is, is quite plentiful in Jamaica. But the Mormon church, they are very minuscule in number. And why this is so? Because Mormons is polytheistic. They don't believe that there is just one God. They believe in a plurality of gods. The Jehovah's Witness, on the other hand, while they are acknowledged by Christendom that it's a cult, right? They believe that there is only one God. But yet still their belief in that one God vastly differs right from the belief of the majority of christians are evangelical christians what they believe about this one god is vastly different the church on a whole the body of christ on a whole believes differ on that one god in comparison to the jehovah's witness group but yet still jehovah's witness could gain a good a decent enough you know, foothold in jamaica why because they say one god but the mormon church because they don't say one god any Jamaican you go to and say that there's three, they are going to reject you. But you can say that there's one and teach all kind of crap and do all kind of foolishness and best believe that your cult, it will thrive in Jamaica. I stated in the video clip that you saw there that the term for this tolerance for religious beliefs, it is called ecumenism. While it is true that we can be tolerant, right, when it comes to religious belief, there should be a degree, a limit, to how tolerant you will actually be. 
when it comes to religious beliefs. But Jamaica, they don't believe that there should be a limit. As long as you say there is one God, once you don't go outside of that scope and say that there is two or three, Jamaica will tolerate you. And I said it. I said it in my video. But I never imagined that it would have reached to this stage. Right, because I knew how vulnerable Jamaica is that anyone can set up a cult. And this is why All Things Religious doesn't get as much support. Because All Things Religious, the primary purpose of it is to expose false teachings, false teachers, falsehood, right, and expose cults as well. But what I am doing, I am defying the culture of Jamaica by not being tolerant to any form of quote-unquote Christian teaching or Christian practices but I hope that this what happened will actually change Jamaica's mind right when it comes to teachings that they will no longer say hey as long as they believe that there is one God right let them be no I am hoping that this will actually teach them a lesson yes you can believe that there is one God. The Bible said the devils also believe that there is one God and tremble. Believing that there is just one God is not sufficient. What you believe about that one God is important. And what and how you carry out that belief and that one, uh, of that one God is also important. And this is the main thing that you should learn from the Kevin Smith's cult that emerged in Montego Bay. This is the main thing that I want all of you guys to learn. Now, for my non-Jamaican audience who, who is wondering what it is that happened with this cult, right? It is the number one thing that is buzzing in Jamaica right now. Right, guys? It's the number one thing that is buzzing. It is buzzing so much that if you go on YouTube trending, you hardly find any music video on trending list. Most of what you find that is trending is, is a video on Kevin Smith. It is totally shaking up Jamaica, right? Now, before I point out some of the things that you can learn from the Kevin Smith cult, I'm going to share a few clips with you, I think about three or four, that will give you just a synopsis of what happened with this cult. With that being said, check out the video. JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, cult ritual led to murder and mayhem in a St. James church. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. A high-level police investigation is underway into the bizarre murder of a man and a woman in the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries in Montego Bay, St. James. Two deceased are believed to have been sacrificed as part of a religious cult. A third man who attacked the security forces with a knife was shot dead. Preliminary reports are that a woman, who is said to be a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, but aligned to the religious cult, also featured in the dramatic incident. The church is located in the Albion area of St. James. Police and JDF personnel reportedly received information that the religious cult was in the process of sacrificing some of its members. Members of the JCF and JDF reportedly infiltrated the premises where the church is located at about 9 p.m. and were met with gunshots. The shots were allegedly fired by members of the religious cult. Police and JDF sources say after the gunfight, a search was conducted and it was observed that a woman, Tanika Gordon, who was said to be sacrificed, was seen lying face down, dressed in white, with her throat slashed. The woman's throat was reportedly slashed by a member of the church. A male member of the church was reportedly seen alive but injured by members of the security forces. The man was lying on his stomach with knife and gunshot wounds to his back. The man was reportedly heard saying that he was shot and stabbed by the pastor and a female who is currently a serving member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force but aligned to the church. Members of the security forces were reportedly told by the man that he was about to be sacrificed by the religious cult. The condition of the injured man is not immediately clear. Another man was also reportedly observed lifeless. 
The man is believed to have been stabbed and shot by members of the church. A male member of the church who allegedly attacked the police and military team with a knife was shot dead by the security forces. The man who allegedly attacked the security forces and was killed has been identified as Kevon Plummer. According to sources, the members of the congregation were instructed by their leader, who claims to be God, to go to church dressed in white on Sunday evening. The pastor, who is said to be among the leading members of the religious cult, was handcuffed and detained. Several members of the church remain in custody on Monday morning. They are to be interrogated by police investigators. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, another woman says she was next in line to be sacrificed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Another woman was among the congregants at the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries in Paradise, St. James on Sunday, when deadly violence erupted is now emotionally drained after realizing how close she came to death. The woman, whose family has asked that her name not be mentioned, said that she has been a member of the religious group for over a year and was contacted on Saturday and instructed to dress in white garments for her visit to the church on Sunday. She was also told to prepare herself to be cleansed as some members of the congregation will be traveling on a heavenly journey as an ark would be coming for them at 9.30 a.m. on Monday. I thought the term that those who are cleansed would be received on the ark was just a biblical term. I never dreamt that it was actually our leader who was going to be taking our lives through sacrifice. The no remorseful woman said, A number of the sisters were very happy and anxious to be among those who were to be cleansed, but we never knew that we were going to be murdered. She said that when she arrived at the location on Sunday afternoon, Church leaders had gathered around and were calling up members of the congregation one at a time as a ritual was on the way to determine who was worthy of boarding the ark. Those who found themselves lucky were placed to one side, while some of we who he said needed to be cleansed were placed by ourselves, she added. They would be in for rude awakening, she said, as a senior figure in the church took hold of one of the congregants and began cutting her throat. Everybody frightened when he cut the first lady short. Then he moved to a man in front of me and cut him in throat too, the woman claimed, adding that she wet herself when she realized she was next in line, merely dropped down. However, she said that before he came over to her, he removed some tubes from a man who had recently been discharged from hospital, causing blood to splash all over. Everybody started to run for them life, and at the same time he saw one of the leader them with a shotgun, like the one the guy them used on the brink struck. I'm here when the gunfire, but Amino says that I run as fast as Mukulango, she said, adding that efforts were made to stop them from escaping. According to the woman, she was one of the first persons who fled, jumping over a wall into a yard where she begged a call to tell her mother what had happened. Up to now, I can't believe how close my confidant left my little daughter, she said. When asked if she would return to the church, if it should reopen, the woman responded no emphatically. JPN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. Yes, I'm a shoot up for my church, I'm a shoot. And the people them are running a ball out and they're all going. There are cult, cult like behaviors and cult like uh, a setup that we have seen here. It's the story that has been dominating local headlines. A bloody end to a bizarre night of religious rituals on Norwood Avenue in Montego Bay, St. James. Dr. Kevin O. Smith, the leader of the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries, had summoned his flock for an all-white affair. 
It is only for those who have pure blood, who have not taken the mark. If you come and you have taken the mark and you want to swear on the seal, you are going to fall down and die. The mark to which he referred is the COVID vaccine. For those who are coming, they are coming with flour. They are coming with oil. They are coming with wine. They are coming with fruits. They are coming with olive. Hear the word of the prophet. Come from the north. Come from the south. Come from the east. Come from the west. The airport shall be open for pure blood. Sunday, October 17 was the date. We are aware that uh, 144 congregants had been told to come here, uh, to meet here. Women, 31 of them, men, at least six, and children, 14 in total, turned up. But something horrible was about to happen. But who really is this religious leader, Kevin Smith? He was born in Glen Gough, St. Catherine in 1982. Smith, a Jamaica College Pass student, posted to his Facebook page this picture he took with his mother in 1993 when he was attending Jamaica College. He later moved to Canada for some time where he studied psychology. In 2011, Smith returned to Jamaica. He was regarded as a father of many who worshipped at his organization. He also did some outreach and offered scholarships to a group of young men attending university. One of his benefactors told the Gleaner that Smith called these young men prefects. He said one of the prefects is currently a doctor, another a model, and one is a captain in the Jamaica Defense Force. Was there anything at all that, that raised concerns for you? Because you say it was like a regular church, but we're now hearing these stories that don't sound like a regular church. So was there anything initially that sent up a red flag for you? All right, so over time, yes. Over time, um, being there, things started to get uh, a bit, um, you'd say, manipulative, right? Um, being there, I started to, to, to see things that, you know, aren't really acceptable for me. Um, and, and that, for, for one, was, was some re uh, red flags, you, you would say. And um, it's like you couldn't really say anything to the, to the members, so to speak, because, you know, if you say anything uh, to any other members, so to speak, they would basically, you know, probably chastise you or, of course, um, you know, kick you out of the church. And mind you, once you leave the church, everybody and them dog basically turn them back against you. You're like, no, enemy number one. Let me start with the, the accounts of people once members of the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries raise serious red flags about the religious organization. He didn't speak highly of women at all. Women, he'd always be, um, be derogatory with them, you know, talk about them being whorish and everything. He, he spoke about women in a very demeaning way. So the last part of the time I was at the church, I started getting uncomfortable because I'm saying, this doesn't sound like a joke anymore. You know, church is supposed to be uplifting people. So in the early days, though, how did you react to that? Because you were there for four years. I think it was almost like a, a, a gradual thing. So it was, when I was going there, it was more Christian days. It's almost as if there's a sense of being gullible when you're there. Like everything that, every rumor you hear about him, every, every, every behavior he has, he always had a charismatic explanation for it. So you didn't even dwell on questioning certain things because he always seemed to have a logical explanation of it. Oh, don't talk to people who spread rumors on him because he's a pastor and people are always going to be talking about pastors to, to, bring down their reputation so people don't come into the kingdom, you know, don't give air to gossip because that's a sin. You believe him when he says stuff because everything has a biblical explanation and he knows his Bible. He really does. Yes, now regarding that first clip that you guys just read, there is something that, there is something that you should I want to point out to you two things. Yes, one of the things that is pointed out is that 
when it comes to cults, right? They don't like they don't basically accept criticism well. Right? And the, the um Dr. Walter Martin likens likens this to what he call close-mindedness. Right? He likens this to close-mindedness where cults are our persons involved in cults. They themselves generally don't like to be criticized by anyone outside of the cult, especially. Right? So if you give her any critique or anything, they're either going to say, don't listen to that person or oh, they are devil and the devil inspire them and all these kind, kind of things. The leaders oftentimes create this kind of culture that per anyone who criticizes the group, it's a criticism that is inspired by Satan, right? So this is one of the factors that you find with just about every cult, right? Another factor that you find with cults is that the young lady mentioned about him always having a charismatic answer, right? To everything that he do. Whenever he's questioned, right? Regarding anything that he does, he have a charismatic answer. And then he also knows his Bible very well. So basically what the, the person who is talking is saying in it is that when she said that he knows his Bible well, is that more likely he uses the Bible to basically justify any form of wrong actions that he would have done, right? And how he does this, right? Dr. Walter Martin will liken this as redefinition, right? I'm not going to give it a quote, or if I find a quote, instead of reading it, right, I will put it on the screen. I'll try to find a quote for me, man, put it on the screen that you guys can pause the video and read it. I have a 12 video series titled Cult 101 where I tell you in details how to understand cults, right, and how to basically help someone who you are um, to get out of a cult and so on. You can check out the series if you have the time. Look at them individually. But the very first video that I did uh, on the series talking scale in the language barrier, in that series I talk about um, what is called redefinition, right? And the whole idea of redefinition is basically taking biblical terms or biblical jargons and so to speak and basically twisting it, redefining it, giving it a total different meaning from what is intended by the author of, uh, 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 of what was written in, the, in a particular text. Right, so what they will do is like they would pinch out a verse and they will take it out of context, apply a total different meaning that is foreign to the text itself. Right? That is a tactic that most cultists, right, will oftentimes use. They take the Bible and they give it a total different meaning in order to mislead individuals. So when she's saying that he's, he knows his Bible very well, yeah, he knows it well and he twists it very well. Right, so this is something that I want to point out to you guys where cult is concerned. With that being said, check out another clip. And even as old you are, just to even go to the barber shop, I was living there and I ran away from the house about six times. But persons the they, they, they thought that I am just being... started to get manipulative. Tell me what you meant by that. All right, so... I was amongst uh, several of the young men that was living at the location, right? Um, no, to to the church, it was basically uh, him assisting us. No, yes, some persons were being assisted with, um, you know, financially going back to school, um, helping out, uh, getting jobs in the church, right? Um, that kind of assistance. No, over time you want your personal freedom. You want you, you want to do your personality. You want to go out, have fun as a as a young man. You know, you you are being limited from that. You know, drastically. So, you know, that was um where you would say the manipulation would come from, uh, where that is concerned, from my experience. Tell me, um tell me what you mean when you said you were limited, your freedom was limited. All right, so you want to go, for example, you want to go hang out with some friends. You want to probably go to the movies. Um, 
you know, stuff like that. And you, you, you would have to ask permission to go. Um, and probably more likely is going to prevent you from basically going. Example. So was there anything that actually made you say, hold on, something sup, not right? Because you, used the, you earlier said some things are not acceptable. All right. Um, all right, so there are instances, right, where the, the, the males of the institution, right, uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the church, he would have, you know, oftentimes try to poison our minds against the females that are there, right? Um, saying that, you know, if you leave woman alone, um, you know, uh, stuff like those. What would you say was his and the church's general attitude to women? Ooh, um, how would I say no? Um, it, it, it was neutral. In one sense, it was neutral. Um, you know, other than the young men, other than him telling the young men, you know, leave X alone, leave Y alone, and then at the end of the day, you know, infiltrate our minds saying that, hey, you know, the girl that which still to the family there. You know, that type of um, scenario. And that would be about women who are actually in the organization? Right. Would you say then that he was controlling? Right. Yeah. All right, let me ask you to hold on. We're just going to take a break, do a little bit of business, and we'll come back. We're talking to a young man. We're calling David. That's not his real name. He was a member of the church the organization that's been in the news so much over the past few days and we'll be back in just a moment all right now just before the break david you are saying you agreed when i asked you if you would describe it as, as describe the past as controlling and and you agreed with that 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 adjective that description how else did that controlling manner play out I'm sorry, can you repeat the, repeat the question? What else did he do that you would describe as controlling? All right. Um, so outside of that, as I was, I was, it's, I was, as I was expressing, you know, you, 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 know you're, you're, you were limited. You basically couldn't do the things that you want to do. Life was about just going to church, basically. Right. Um, you, you couldn't do anything. So if you work, the probably the only thing that you can do is probably go work, come back home and, and, and that's it, you know, for us. Right, so I'm going to read you from a, um, read from another book now titled Stolen Minds, Understanding Cults. Right. That will explain to you what occurred, what what is basically said in that other clip. It reads thus, most cults, the reader is giving you some characteristics of cults. Because this chapter is called Understanding the Characteristics of Cults. So far we describe, we have described the three elements that cults have in common. Now let's examine these in more detail. One, most cults have a self-appointed authoritarian leader who is accountable to no one. Some groups may have a core leadership consisting of several people. Sometimes members of one family, leaders often claim to have special knowledge, powers, or a unique vision. You will see this about this man as we go on further in the video. If it is a religious group, they may claim to be extraordinary prophets with a special relationship to God or possess a particular truth accessible only to them. These characteristics apply in various degrees in different groups. Leaders will foster emotionally dependent relationships within the memberships to exploit them, usually for money, power or loyalty to ensure they, do, they donate tremendous amount of time to the group. Leaders may seek to, explo to sexually exploit members and utilize them for their own purposes and agenda. And basically this pastor did some of that, sexually exploit them. In the most insidious cults, Members are used to commit crimes, although in most groups the nature of exploitation is more subtle. Leaders often have an ends justify the means approach to the ways in which they operate their groups. Now, this leader, Kevin Smith, 
right? Had, uh, when police raided the place, they actually instructed one of the members to actually fire shots in basically or attack the police. So yes, this, this, this um, book that I'm reading from is right on point when it comes to how cult operates. Next you hear the man, the, the, the guy spoke about him not being able to do certain things, right? And what the cult expert in this book basically says is that one of the elements of cults is that they control a person's social environment, information, and time, right? Next, create a, a, a sense of powerlessness by keeping people from their normal social support network and instilling a dependence upon the group, right? So here is where we find two of these mechanisms written in this book being displayed here from the, from, uh, uh, um, from the cult church. Now it so happened that the place is getting dark, but I'll see just how much I can actually cover in this video. With that said, check out another part of the video. You, you, said, you, you said, you know, initially you were fine with it, but then later you started, you said to, to feel uncomfortable and you described the restrictions on your freedom. How were, mm -hmm. what, was there anything else? How were people in the church treated? I've seen where people, right, their own birth parents, basically they turn their mind against their own birth parent. You can imagine that. So seeing things like those and, and as well being told not to visit my, my family um, because, you know, I'm going to die or this or that, you know. Um, those are some of the things that would basically you you would have heard on a on a on a regular basis uh, where that is concerned, and that of itself basically would have, 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 have um, put you into fear. You you said people could be turned against their birth parents. How how would that happen? All right. So one primarily you would call you a witch, right? So no, no. Mind you, you see the teachings that um, is, are, are given at the at the church, right? Once, 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 once you're deemed as a witch to him, the entire church is against you, basically, right? It's like there is no redemption, right? So, no, you as a you as a person probably have no idea what what is happening, but you know you are told you're a witch. And that of itself just, you know, automatically just turned the people in mind against you. So I've seen where a, 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 a son and a daughter heard that their mom, their, mo their mother is a witch and entirely, you know, turned their back on their parent, their own blood parent. Would, you know, these, would, these, would these parents be parents who are in the church or, or not, yeah. or outside? They, they were a part of the church. What I'm trying to understand, though, these are, I'm trying to understand, would these be parents who are, because you said these could be people who are in the church, the parents who are being called mm -hmm. witches or whatever. So how would they mm -hmm. be allowed to, be re to remain in the organization if they're viewed so negatively? If he has said that uh, you're a witch, would you be, All right, so would they be then kicked out or they're allowed to stay? All right. So once you are deemed, once you are ever deemed a witch in the in the in the ministry, you you you're, you're out of that place. No, you said that you are being told not to visit your your relatives because you would die. So mm -hmm. when, when you first heard that, what was your reaction? All right. So when I first heard that, um, it it would it, it is now coming from a spiritual perspective, right? Spiritual perspective meaning no. On average, at that at that ministry, you know, you the nature of the ministry is way different than any other ministry that I've ever witnessed and seen. So you have deliverance services, and deliverance services happen probably every other night or every night at, at, at the church. No, mind you, the deliverance service you have you ever witnessed where you know somebody was possessed or has been possessed with 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 um, a evil spirit, and the entire church has to be there trying to you know. Cast, cast, cast the evil spirit out of a person. No, in that ministry, it's, it's, it's just as though I'm sitting here on a, on a chair. That's so simple it is for, for him. So you being at the church and hearing, you know, evil spirit coming out of people saying that, hey, 
I want the John Brown this, I want the John Brown that. If John Brown ever make a mistake and go around there, so you understand? Um, he would be hurt, you know, that type of thing. So it, it would then you know, come off as if if you're not at the ministry, if you're not under his covering, you know, you 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 are a recipe for disaster then. 